Well, hello again, ladies and gentlemen. Eddie Marcus here. I want to thank you so very much, those of you who've been listening to my post entitled No Good Republican. I want to thank you so very much for giving that your attention. And those who subscribed because of something that I've said that's worthy, I want to thank you so very much for that. I come here tonight to speak again to you as spokesman and advocate of basic human rights for all people. And I want you to know that I am perhaps drawing closer to those dangerous statements. What I mean dangerous statements, those truths that, no, that they don't want you to know. And who are they? The pillars of this society. And I know that we are all supporters of it, but it is those pillars that really manipulate and control things. But at the same time, I have some major health problems, you know. I have, for those of you who don't know, I recently had a heart attack. And uh, it was something. And I got other problems, you know, high blood pressure uh, and some other things. So my point is that I might just up and out of here any day. And that would be okay with me under certain circumstances. However, I would be regretting the fact that I haven't seen the changes in the society that I would like very much to see. And I come to tell you and to share with you some things that perhaps I know that might be beneficial to what we're trying to do. And I want to make sure that before I die, which could be in a, in a moment, <laughs> that I get a chance to say these things to you. If I had a subject that I was going to speak from, I would call it a new beginning. I want us to always remember, if we haven't, let us at least stack it up. We are all brothers and sisters in the human race. We got things that makes us different and we got so many more things that are common that makes us uniquely one. We haven't had the opportunity to focus on those things because the systems that we live under in the world are usually based upon some other outcomes and objectives that have nothing to do with the benefit of life for the masses, but more specifically for the few. This is the product of the lie that has always been perpetrated and has never ceased. But before I die, I want you to know, ladies and gentlemen, that... Uh, we, the people, need to know certain things. I'm constantly saying that all things belong to the power that we cannot see. All existence is a result of the powers that we cannot see. And we do some pretty good things of the things that we can see that we do. But we mess up a lot of them as well. But most of us don't even know certain things. For instance, if I ask you, Why are you here? Why are you here? If you ask me, why am I here? I'll say I'm here because I'm needed. If I ask you, because I just thought about something you might say, I don't know. But if I ask you who you are, You can tell me a lot of reasons, but I would bet very few of you would say that you are a child of the living God. I'm thinking that most of you won't say that. And so if I ask you why you are, would you remember that I said I met a need? And do you recognize the need that you meet? What are you? Do you know what you are? The what represents your purpose here, what you bring. It represents go, your career, whatever that is. That's your what. 
Then there's a question that says, when are you? And the answer to that is now. When the question might also come up, where are you? Wherever you are, that's where you're needed. Then the other question might come about that says, how? How? And this is when we say, together. We're going to come together. What am I saying to us tonight? I'm saying that every last one of us living in hell, and I have mentioned oftentimes that this is hell. We are all here because we are all guilty. And we've been taught to put others down and blame others for this or that. and You know, can't get along. But we're all here. <laughs> How can we think that we are better than some of the others? We're all here. So what are we going to do about that? Man. Well, did you think of it? We got to get out. So how do we get to that point of together? Let's face it. We've done some crazy things. Some of them were heinous. Some of them we might say wasn't that bad. But we must be willing to forgive them all. Every sin that... I hear water has been raining. Where's that water running to? Man, oh man, I hope I don't have a flood tonight. Ah, we'll see in the morning. Anyway, we're going to have to forgive one another. Forgive one another. And a new beginning. We must start a new beginning. Treating people right. Treating people right. Now, I put together many videos that you can check any of them, and I'd make it simple for you. So I'm going to say this real fast. Heaven putting the power that you can't see on the throne. Wonderful power. And allowing that power that you can't see to live inside of you, and you allow it to live so that those outside of you can see. Now, that power that you recognize that's invisible is able to do all these magnificent things, which means that the power that's in you will be doing the same kind of magnificent things on the same line for which those things are made. So, recognizing that, each of us recognize our gifts, our career choices. We make them the ones that give us our greatest the ones that permits us and allows us to get up every day or night, do what we got to do, and can't get enough of doing it. Out of the billions of us, and we do everything, maximum numbers, engaged in maximum performances. And our performances are well not made to just get through the day, but to last forever. To make sure that we don't have to be repeating these things. That after they're done, we can move on up to do better, bit, bigger and greater things. Because what we do now, we are representatives of that power that we cannot see. So in other words, what we see now is the creation of God. Made through our hands. And by doing that, God is using us to create our own heaven. Well, it's doing whatever God wants us to do. But we see it as our benefit, our reward. A heaven. And so when we do these kinds of things, we don't need the, what, the richest man in the world because we are all the richest people in the world. What that basically means is that our needs, our wants, and our desires are met. We won't desire for nothing that we can't access. But what we have to do, ladies and gentlemen, in meeting this is make sure that everybody, and this be, is very important. This is one of the most important things. We must make sure that everybody got a job, a career. 
Nobody came on this earth to sit down unless they... Nobody came on this earth to sit down. If you don't have any legs, you still made to do something. And that's why you're here. And to make sure that we get the human race, get the best out of everybody that comes here, they have access to all of the resources that would enable them to be the best that they can be in whatever it is. That food, clothing, shelter, education, health care, transportation, and the benefits of life. So that as you pursue whatever your career is, give it your best. And we the people are receiving the best because we deal with the best. So basically what we're saying, ladies and gentlemen, we've got to make sure we got enough hospitals. We've got to make sure we got enough uh personnel we got to make sure we got the facilities we got to make sure we got the staff and all whatever is in, included in that we got to make sure that we got uh builders architects and everybody in every line of life every line of the business of creating those things that we have determined are essential we got a massive number of people so that we, we don't have to work all the time we can work as limited as the system will permit. And it is a system, my friends. It is a system where everybody participates. It is a system where everything belongs to all of us. It is a system where we are a family and everybody participates and everybody lives. It is a system where we, the people, move to bring happiness and joy to everyone. Now, I can go on and on and on, but I think that's enough. you got a, a picture of what I'm trying to say. But in order to do this, we need a new beginning. And we must forgive one another. And we must have uh, an aim. We must have a plan. We must put this thing together. We must have a destination and a GPS and a time frame to get there. This is no game. This is the new life. And I need to see that everything that I can say or what I will be given to say before my demise is done. I want to thank you so very much for giving me this your time and I hope I did not waste it any. So until next time, one other thing. I want to say this. You know tonight or today they indicted Donald Trump. This is a sad moment and everybody that has been waiting for Donald Trump to get his day to be held accountable. People have been frustrated and this is a joyous moment for them. But enjoy this just for a moment. And after this moment of enjoyment, stop it. Stop it. Because this is our brother. We don't know what made him, brought him up to be the kind of guy that he is, but whatever it was, he is. And he's still one of us. And we got to find some way, and this lines right up with forgiveness, to make sure that whatever the situations were that brought him and all of us down here, falling short, that we make the kind of stand that works not just for us, but for everyone. And that includes Donald Trump, his children, and all those mega games that you have been cursing, because I know they've been making you angry, but they too needs love. And they must know that this message about this wonderful new beginning includes them. It involves them in doing everything that I will say. They will, and they bring, and they must. And if they do and when they do, then we can all Enjoy life together. All right, goodbye.